Workers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant in northeastern Japan are starting off the new year preparing for a delicate operation. Tokyo Electric Power Company crews need to remove hundreds of spent fuel rods that are being stored on site. It's the first major step toward decommissioning the facility, a process that's expected to take 40 years. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe visited Fukushima Daiichi on the weekend and expressed his intention to extend full government support. The state of emergency is over and we're now in a transition phase with efforts focused on decommissioning. The government will do all it can to help speed up this process. During the initial decommissioning phases, TEPCO workers will need to remove the spent fuel while keeping melted fuel cool. The first part of this process will begin this year. Workers will start extracting spent fuel rods from the storage pool in the Reactor 4 building. They took out two rods last July during a trial. TEPCO engineers have since studied how to remove about 1,500 others. They plan to start in mid-November and complete the process in December 2014, a year earlier than initially scheduled. They want to remove the rods as soon as possible because of concerns about the storage pool's quake resistance. However, high radiation levels at the reactor site will make it difficult to proceed. TEPCO workers have faced other challenges. Last September, they accidentally dropped a 470-kilogram steel beam into Reactor 3's spent fuel storage pool. That set them back nearly three months. It'll be even harder to figure out how to remove the melted fuel. TEPCO managers plan to complete that process within 10 years. To meet their deadline, they'll need to accelerate a preliminary survey and the development of robotic tools. Prime Minister Abe also spent time during his visit to the Northeast speaking with people who survived the 2011 earthquake and tsunami. He visited them in their temporary houses and listened to their problems. Now Abe says he'll give more power to the agency that oversees the reconstruction of areas hit by the disaster. More than 300,000 people are still living in temporary housing. Abe spoke with some of them last Saturday when he visited Fukushima Prefecture. The major problem is that the Reconstruction Administration suffers from bureaucracy. I want to concentrate authority in the agency to speed up the decision-making process. About 300 people work at the Reconstruction Agency. They coordinate rebuilding and do much of the legal and bureaucratic work related to that. Government officials say now they'll take on oversight of decontamination work and they'll be responsible for moving people forced out by the nuclear accident back into their homes. People across northeastern Japan are looking ahead after the New Year holiday, but those in areas hit hardest by the earthquake and tsunami are reminded daily about their past. Less than a third of the debris has been disposed of properly. Analysts for the Environment Ministry say workers still need to dispose of more than 27 million tons of refuse and sediment. Ministry officials want all of it gone by March of next year. As of last November, workers in Fukushima Prefecture had only dealt with about a tenth of the debris. Those in Iwate had taken care of about a quarter. And those in Miyagi, about a third. Ministry officials say they've had difficulties with handling waste they can't burn and with building incinerators. And they've been challenged in dealing with debris contaminated by radioactive substances, particularly in areas near Fukushima Daiichi. Government officials have tried to set up temporary storage facilities or incinerators, but they've run into opposition from municipalities. Ministry officials say they hope to speed things up. They say the pace of removal has delayed efforts to rebuild communities and has put a psychological burden on residents. Researchers at the Japanese Fisheries Ministry are accelerating their studies on the commercial aquaculture of bluefin tuna. Their work addresses concerns that a high demand for bluefin tuna leads to over-harvesting of baby fish and a subsequent decrease in tuna resources. Farmers provide nearly 60% of the bluefin tuna Japanese consumers eat. They grow the tuna in fish preserves from babies caught at sea. Universities and businesses in Japan have been studying how to raise bluefin tuna from the hatching phase, but they're having trouble maintaining a stable supply of the eggs necessary for the commercial project. This is because it's difficult to control water temperatures best for spawning adult tuna. 
Ministry officials plan to build a research facility in western Japan and collaborate with universities and companies to develop farming technologies. Japan's aquaculture project is expected to offer stable supplies of the fish. They hope to raise 100,000 bluefin tuna annually in fiscal 2016.